Bonjour. Hey guys, welcome to week 15 on the Underwater Realm video blog. And you'll remember back in week 3 that we were lucky enough to win a competition with Rain Dance and Pepsi and have them produce these series of films. Um, but one of the other prizes in that competition was a VIP trip to Cannes Film Festival in the south of France. And here we are. It's beautiful, it's sunny, and we've been here now for five days, hence the, the chronic sunburn on some of us. Um, <laughs> and we are uh, having an absolutely spectacular time. But this week's blog, we really want to talk to you about the first 24 hours. For us, we're completely bewildering. It's such a crazy place. And no amount of advice from people or reading up on the internet can prepare us for those first 24 hours in Cannes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you around the festival and we are going to show you all the different areas, all the different the types of accreditation you can get, that sort of thing, and just kind of give you a very, very basic virgin's guide to the Cannes Film Festival so you know what to expect when you come for your first time. Uh, so we're going to give you a talk around now, we're going to show you each different area and this, ladies and gentlemen, is Cannes Festival 2011. Okay, so this is Cannes 2011. Uh, first time we arrived, we had absolutely no idea what to expect, and we're wandering through these little French streets, uh, wondering quite what the festival was about and how it worked. We really had no idea. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through those first steps and explain a little bit about how the festival worked. First of all, you've got the Palais de Festival. This is the, uh, the palace of the festival. This is where all the big events in Cannes happen, and this is the hub of the film festival itself. Um, this is where you're going to have your accreditation, this is where your passes are going to be sorted out, this is where all the big red carpet premieres happen, this is also where the Marché de Film happens, which is the real reason for the festival to exist. This is where the international film market and the film industry descends upon Cannes, 64th Festival of Cannes, Marché de Film. So we're going to go in there first of all. You get your accreditation and every time you go into anywhere that's officially part of the festival that gets checked. So you're going straight into the, the Palais here and you have security, they'll check your pass, they'll give you a quick sweep over with the, uh, the magnetizing Dubry wand um, and they will allow you into the zones here. So you've got your daily trades, you can pick up your variety, you can pick up your Hollywood Reporter. That'll give you all the daily news on the deals that are being struck um, and all the, the buzz of the festival. The Marche de Film um, is basically where hundreds of different countries and production companies, sales agents, distributors can market their wares um, and they're really looking, they're competing for space and they're competing for your attention so there's big posters, there's billboards, there's trailers, there's one sheets everything all about promoting these movies that are looking for distribution so they're constantly showing these trailers to people trying to persuade them to buy the movie to then sell in their own region be that on DVD, on TV, over the internet or in theatrical release um, some fantastic product there, there's also some ropey product, um, I'll leave it up to you to decide which is which, um, but there's a huge broad spread, everything from uh, erotica to art house, from action B-movie to rom-com. Um, and the other thing they all have is these one sheets, this is something that, uh, that we learned quite a lot about, there's a, a one sheet which will have a full synopsis of the movie, all the stars attached, and they're a really good way of marketing the picture as well. Another thing that you'll find within the Palais is Short Film Corner. This is um, probably the reason that most people f first time come to Cannes as part of Short Film Corner. Very, very busy at 5 o'clock. It's happy hour. That means there's an open bar, free snacks. Um, that draws a big crowd. The rest of the time, Short Film Corner is not terribly busy. So if you're bringing your film out here for the first time, don't expect it to have an audience all by itself. By all means, promote it. But as you can see, there are a lot of other pieces of product here competing for attention. There are thousands and thousands of movies there all with their own unique take on the marketing um, 
you really are competing for people's attention. But there are a great couple of ways you can get your product out there, and it's a fantastic way to network. There's a lot of actors that um, put their heads headshots up there, so that you can collaborate and work with these people on future projects. Um, in order to actually show people your films, there's uh, there's a couple of areas you can do that. One of which is the digital film library, where there are computers that you can rent and you can go in and you can watch any of the films as part of the short film corner you can also do that online uh, and you can drag people in there and show them your movie or you can book one of the mini screening rooms which is basically a small cinema where you can fill it with people that you drag in and you can show your movie on a, on a larger screen there should you want to as you leave short film corner you're getting to the international village or the pavilions um, this is what uh, hundreds of small tents where countries will take over an area with a terrace that leads right out onto the water, right out onto the beach, and they'll be promoting locations and film services within that country. Um, one that we spent a lot of time in is the European Media Pavilion. Now this one you need a special pass to get into, um, but it's a networking environment. Um, should you have the right pass, you get free access to the bar there, you've got drinks, coffees, teas, uh, croissants all day, and you can also bring people who haven't got the right ticket. You can bring them in for meetings as your guest and you can get free drinks for them. We've got the American pavilion is the only pavilion you actually have to pay to get into. Belgian pavilion they do free drinks um, free Belgian lager every day which is wonderful and a great way to, to meet people and network. Um, you also have the Thai pavilion, they do free Thai food on certain days. Cinema de la Plage this is a cinema of the beach um, this is opened up in the evenings and this is open to the public so they put out hundreds of deck chairs and the public can come in and watch classic movies on the side of the beach the other side of the Palais is where all the yachts are. Now this is a fantastic area. Um, companies such as Kodak, Pinewood, uh, a number of different people will rent a yacht and they will deck it out and they will throw lunches, they will throw cocktail parties, they'll throw huge parties in the evenings and uh, a lot of these are invite only but you can talk your way in if you know what you're doing or if you're dressed right or if you know the right people. Um, and it's a fantastic way of networking. It's just that little bit more executive than meeting people in the pavilions, a little bit more private, and, uh, and you can strike up some really interesting conversations, meet some very, very interesting people there if you can get an invite. This is the red carpet. This is what a lot of people think of when they say Cannes Film Festival, um, and every day there are three or four premieres of really, really big movies, um, and the stars all get dolled up and are walking straight down this red carpet in front of the world's press. Great way to do some celeb spotting if that's what you're into. Um, you can see here that's actually Mila Jojovic and uh, she's attending one of the screenings. But if you've got a pass to the festival and you've got black tie, you can actually, if you're in time, you can book tickets to come and do one of these red carpet screenings and you will be one of the attendees scooting up the red carpet along with all the celebs. So it's a fantastic thing to do. We didn't actually get to do it, we didn't get tickets in time, but that's certainly on the cards for next year. In the evenings in Cannes, there is a lot to do. Um, as the sun goes down, the place takes on a completely different atmosphere. Um, Old Town is a great place to start out after a hard day's networking, or perhaps before a hard day's networking in the evening. Um, wonderful little narrow French streets and great restaurants that range from about 15 euros up to 50 euros for a four-course dinner. Um, fantastic food, fantastic entertainment there, and a lot of celebrity look-alikes. Um, you can also head down the Quasette or down the, the side of the beach where there will be a number of beach parties. Again, a lot of these are invite only. Um, there's also a number of pubs and clubs. Um, the Brits tend to head to one called the Petty Majestic, which is again quite a useful place to be networking, which is really what Cannes is all about. And then you've got the yachts in the evening, and uh, a lot of those are throwing very exclusive but very, very cool parties. Lots of free champagne, lots of canapes, wonderful monkfish on a couple of them as well. So really, really good experience. Um, and there's events going on all around the Palais as well. You can see uh, on our last night there was actually a huge fireworks display, which was a really wonderful way to end an absolutely incredible week. Um, huge, huge baptism of fire going into Cannes in, in such a fantastic way. And we will definitely be going again next year. We're having it, we're finding it actually quite difficult to readjust to everyday life. So we're just counting down the days now till Can 2012. So that is a uh, quick roundup of Can 2011 and what to expect for your first trip out here. I um, hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's been useful. But before we go, a huge shout out to everybody that's been so helpful to us while we've been out here. Elliot Grove, Rain Dance, Zara, Suzanne, Xavier, Julian, Rory, the whole Rain Dance team have been absolutely crucial in, in allowing us to, to stop kind of 
floundering and find our feet and, uh, and start actually making some really interesting contacts and having some really interesting meetings out here. Um, it's been a spectacular trip. Everybody's been partying. We've been on yacht parties, beach parties. We've been setting up some great meetings, seeing some great films. Um, so it's been a really spectacular experience. I highly suggest you come out if you can. And uh, we will see you next time on theunderwaterrealm.com. All right. <laughs>